how to download and install the Go programming language on Pop OS 22.04 Linux. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's go to the. Uh, let's, here's my um, here's my Pop Linux installation here. Okay, we're gonna. I already have my browser pointed to the Go to the Go home page here. Go.dev. That's the home page. Okay. First of all, let's um, let's just check the terminal real quick, and I wanted to show you that Go is not installed. Now, the Go command is what would actually activate if if, if Go was installed and on the path properly. And you can, as you can see, the Go command is not is not found. Okay. So once we install it, then it'll it'll be found, and we can work with it, the Go command. Now I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna skip uh, you know the snap and the apt and all that and just go right to the source. Probably better that way. Certainly it's it's newer than than that version there. And I'm not sure what versions are in the apt repos. Of course you know and then the snaps have problems maybe flat packs were not. So I just bypass all that. Kind of too easy anyway. Just to key in a you know a pseudo uh, apt snap command whatever. Try to challenge yourself. You don't need to, you know, compile from source. That's probably going too far, unless you really know what you're doing and you have the time and the the skill and, and whatnot. Otherwise, for me, kind of a an intermediary space is kind of, is, is dealing with um even a dot deb and a dot rpm file are kind of easy to work with. For me, kind of I think for me like a tar file is, is kind of like it's 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 Linuxy it's Linuxy enough to be challenging and, and different, but but and not really. Be very, you know, involved like you know, you know, uh, compiling from source, or or doing a, a simple apt command, or you know, dealing with a, a dev file or an rpm or whatever. So or uh, yeah, so for me, a tar file is is is, is Linuxy enough. That's pretty good without being too complicated or being too easy. Okay, so I'm gonna go for the tar file. Okay, so we'll clear that. Go back to the to the web page here. I want to go download here. And then you can poke around here. I don't want to do it from source. Okay, we're on Linux, so we're gonna, you know, obviously we're gonna ignore Mac and Windows, and and we're not gonna compile from source. We're gonna go here. See, it's 1.19 is the most current version. It's a tar.gz file, okay, for Intel based 60 for 64-bit Intel systems. Okay, good. This is what I want right here, and it downloads the tar file here, and we have. Uh, We've got got a couple of minutes to go here. Okay, okay, we're down. We're done downloading the uh, the tar file, so we're pretty much done with the uh, the go page and the download page here. So we'll minimize that. Go to the terminal, and it should be in my download folder. So we'll we'll cd into there, and we'll look for it with lsa. And there it is right there, okay. The Go 1.19 tar file, tar.gz file. Okay, good. So clear that. And then I'm going to go into a pseudo session and I'm going to use the tar, the tar, the tar utility. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to extract the archive and decompress it. And then we're going to redirect the contents into a, Custom into a specific path where the Go environment variable of Go root would be looking for the Go installation. I don't think it would work if you put it if you just um, installed it. If the if, if you installed the Go root, it, it made that the Go root uh, you know environment Go root uh, the Go root and Go environmental variable into just somewhere in the home folder. It has to be in the USR dash of slash local directory so um, let's go ahead and do that okay so we have the tar file open and and what is it it's hold on here what what was the name of the file it was go 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 1.9 okay take a look here Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Been a while. 
you have to have passed in the flags. Okay, we're going to extract, and we want it to be verbose so we can see what's going on, and and we're going to decompress it. It's, since it's compressed, we're going to use the, the Z flag here and the file. These are the four I usually use for, with tar. I, I don't know why I forgot that for a moment. Yeah, we're going to extract instead of C for a create. We're going to extract verbose so we see what it's doing. Then the Z for the um, for the GZ compression algorithm to unzip it, and the F uh, is 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 going to accept the, the file name into it. Okay, so then then we can uh, auto complete in the the, the, uh, the tar file this way, and I'm going to redirect it with a, with a, a dash capital C uh, f uh, flag switch here, and I want it to go to US, USR slash local, so I'm going to key that in. This is where this is where the, the go root is going to look for the installation here. Okay. And that and what you see here is is the the dash v when we put in the, the v in there, that's what's showing what what it's doing. Otherwise you wouldn't see all this output here. Okay. Okay, we can go ahead and clear that. CD out of there and we can just go check it real quick. USR and then into local and we can see what's in here there should be a, there should be a go file here okay here's the go root here okay good so in the go environment in the go uh, programming environment this this um this installation here will be p attached to the go root go environment variable okay so we're done there we don't need to be here anymore but we let's make note of this uh, path U usr local go cuz we're going to put that into the path the path environment variable so we can actually use the go command in the, in the bash terminal okay so we're going to go back and clear everything out back to the starting point of root here I mean of home and let's see okay we installed it but it's not the go is not found well that's because that is because we need to add that path that uh, slash usr slash local slash go and then there's a, a bin subfolder in the in the go in that go file in that go folder we're gonna have to add that to the path environment variable okay so we can do this by adding the following line to our home dot profile which would just be for the user or if we want it to have go global for all users you could put it into the Etsy profile for a system wide installation. I'm just gonna show it in my in my home just for just for, for my just for me as the only user on the system okay so we're gonna put this into the into the home into the dot profile uh, file here dot profile file it's a hidden see it's a dot it's a dot file it's hidden and we wouldn't see that if we didn't pass in the a f the flag here so we can put it here into the profile file here so we're gonna clear this I'm going to use my nano in terminal editor. I'm going to open profile and I'm not getting any kind of message saying it's not uh, writable or executable so I think all the permissions are okay here. Okay, so I'm going to arrow down, arrow down here, give a little space here. Okay, now we're going to add that, we're going to add that path, we're going to add that, we're going to add that path of you of USR local go bin to the path environment variable. So we do that by typing in the following code, the following lines here. Export capital path equals the path environment variable here with the dollar sign. That's what this is the key part here. This dollar sign is the actual variable that's going to hold the path we're going to add to it. So it'll put it on the path, so we can execute the go command from anywhere in the system. Okay, and then, then we're going to go ahead and colon, and we're going to put in the path. It was slow, low, lowercase, USR local. Remember what it was? USR local, go, and the the bin was inside the go. We, we didn't take a look at that, but it's there. That's where the binary is. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and give a little space here. And then uh, to get out of nano, it's control O, yes, enter, and control X, and we're out of it. 
Now, the the change we just made is not going to apply immediately unless we hit it unless we either do a source command or we just uh, log out. Let's just go ahead and log out. Yeah. Okay. So we can we, we in order for this change to take effect, we're going to have to either restart and log back in, which I don't want to do right now. Simply closing the terminal is not going to work. I actually have to restart or just, you know, log out. A, a real log out, not just a opening, not just a closing and reopening of the terminal. Or we can just stay in this in the session that we're in now and just use the source command on that profile file that we just edited. Okay. So that's the same as logging out and whatnot. Okay, so that that should put that go command on the um on the, tr on the on the path now and we should be able to access it here okay there you go go was installed and then here's some um, some some uh, some options some other sub commands that you could pass in we'll take a look at a couple of those in a minute first of all let's clear this and let's just verify let's verify the version always forget if it's single dash double dash Hmm. Let's see what was the uh, command for getting the uh, the version here. Hold on. Maybe it was capital V. No. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. With uh, with go, you don't have to pass in a you know a dash v or a dash dash v or a capital V. It's just go version like that. Okay. So go version, and here it is 1.19. Okay, the most current one. Okay, good. So it's installed, right? And it's on the path. And we verified the installation. Okay, good. And then a couple of quick things about the about the Go development environment. It's got its own unique environment uh, considerations. Okay, we'll hit, use the Go command again. And we'll just go down. Now you can go Go build here, which just build the executable then you can run it with a dot slash command but it won't run it for you but it'll just create the executable then dot slash will run it okay and we'll take a look at the go environment in the, in a second and then the go mod will, will create a module which is the new way of uh, uh, managing your your uh, your packages and whatnot the go path the go path would have been that that's the legacy way of doing it we already did the version here. So the go path, the go path here. That's the legacy. Go path is the legacy way of doing things. Where you, uh, in your home you would have a go file, a go folder with a package, a bin, and a source package, or a, a package, a source, and a bin. Yeah, for your for your your source code and your in your package, in your dependency ma uh, management and your package manager. And that's been kind of deprecated for Go mod. So if you do Go module, you put all your dependencies into the Go module file here. And then of course Go run, which I don't. Yeah, okay. So then the build will give you the executable, and you run it manually. And then Go run will will run the executable, but it won't save it. So it'll build it and run it, but it won't save the executable. Whereas build will save it for you, then you run it manually. So yeah, so so build and run did the version and we'll take a look at the environment here in a second kind of fun to look at that and then of course the go mod is the new way of doing things go path is the old legacy way of your, of creating your your go envi development environment we still use the go root but we're just not using go path anymore we're using so go path has essentially been taken over by go mod okay let's take a quick look at the uh at the go environment there at the go environment here there's a lot here now we're going to be using the go module i think it's okay if it's set like that if it's empty then of course the architecture is anti64 now the go bin now we didn't actually set up the uh, the go path so and the go bin would actually be part of the go path the go bin the go path would be the the go folder on the on the home on the, on the home folder and then the 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 the, the bin folder would be the go bin in, would be attached to the go bin uh, 
go environment variable here. So yeah, it was path and go bin. It didn't have one for package or source. But all that's been kind of deprecated. That's legacy now. And the go mod is the new way of doing it. Then here's your architecture, your host. And of course, the operating system is Linux. The go path. Let's take a look and see if the go path is actually here. It might actually be set, but we don't have to really use it like we did before. You just use go mod. Of course, and then within the go... There, there, there was three. Uh, there was uh, three folders. There was PKG source and bin, and the Go bin would have been part of the would have been nested inside the Go path here. Of course, then that's the route we just did, right? Where we uh, directed the the output of that extracted uh, tar file. We put it here. That's the Go root. That that stays the same, I think. Even in the newer versions of Go, this stays the same. But the Go path and the Go bin are deprecated. That's legacy now. So it's Go mod. Then the version and GCC is your GC, is my C compiler and a couple other things that I really haven't dealt with too much. So that's that's pretty much about it. That's your Go environment. Let's take a look at the. Uh, let's see if there's a, an actual Go path here. See, actually, they, they put an actual Go fold, folder on on the desktop. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I don't see it here. I forgot how that was done before. If it did it for you, or if I had to go, if you had to go ahead and and actually set up your Go path, you know, your 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 legacy Go path environment by doing the, all that manually. I don't see a Go. I don't see the Go folder here. But that's really kind of academic because, like I said before, you you have to still have the Go root, but the Go path is legacy. So just do Go mod in the uh, terminal and then the go mod that I keep talking about would be this right here and then you enter on that and you start I mean, nothing happens at this point but then you have to pass in some uh, pass in a file name and then and, and create the module then you add, you add your uh, dependencies into there that's the way new way of doing it the go mod okay so uh, that's pretty much about it leave you with the version here Okay, so you know we uh, we downloaded we we downloaded the tar file, we extracted it, we redirected it, we put it on the path, we checked out that the command works, and we check out some some go some go uh, some go commands that you, some sub commands you can pass to the go command, the go build go, the go build the go run the go you know en environment, and the go mod and we got the version. So that's pretty much it for the for the go. It's pretty. And one last thing, I'll, I'll leave you with. Um, you know, like in Rust, you have the Rust C compiler, and Cargo, the Cargo separate. It's a separate uh, package manager, and of course you have Rust up. So those three things there, as far as I can tell, the only thing that has the only equivalent, in, the only compare one to one comparison in in Go would be between the Go command, the Go actual Go command, which is the compiler here. In the Rust C, that's also the Rust compiler. But it, Cargo kind of does all that for you. So we have build and run, and they have Cargo. Well, it it it, it, it uh, you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't create it for you, and you have to run it manually. Cargo will just create it'll create the executable and run it for you, and it'll save it for you. Whereas in Go, build will just save it, and you can run it manually. Run will create it and then discard it after it runs it. So Go in in, in Rust C. So you know, go. Then you have Rust C and Cargo. So you know, in, in Rust, it's Rust C and Cargo work together. And Go, it's kind of Go and Go run, Go run and Go build. Now in in Rust, they also they have the uh, the Rust up, which kind of up. It's like an updater. It updates the uh, the, the the Rust uh, compiler. It updates the tool chain. I don't think Go has that. I don't think it's got its own uh, tool chain updater. So you have to keep up on on that stuff manually. Okay, so that's 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 the um, installation of Go on on Pop Pop OS Linux 2204. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your your uh, comments and your to your feedback and your comments. Thank you.